Allah. Yo, what it do? It's your boy Jake Starks. The one will win. Here, it's a gorgeous day in DC. I mean, it's winter right now. It's warming up for a t shirt, so this is gorgeous, 60 degrees. But, anyways, I'm here to answer some questions about the one wheel GT and whatever other random questions you had to ask. Let's get into it. First question, first question was, is the one wheel GT worth the wait? Yes. Now, are we talking about the weight because of the extended battery, how much it weighs, or the weight like the delays? When it comes to the delays, it's something that's kind of out of our control. I don't know if many of you are aware of the shortages that we're having. So like computer chips, everything from lumber to whatever is delayed, taking longer than ever. So sucks we gotta wait the delay sucks no one likes having your order pushed back after you drop two thousand plus dollars but um it is worth it uh first of all if we talk about yeah it's worth it how fast is the one wheel gt if i had to say how fast the one wheel don't think of it so much as top speed. Think of it more as acceleration. Off the line, you're getting closer to a uh, unicyclist type acceleration, an electric unicyclist. In comparison to the XR, the torque on the GT is, is magnificent. Is it faster than the XR overall? We'll get into that later. Question three. Does the one wheel GT have pushback? Yes. Yes, it does. If I had to put the pushback on the scale between one to pint, it's like a 7.5, a pint being 10. Um, the pushback on the one wheel GT feels greater than it is because you sit higher off the ground because the tire is larger. It's not so aggressive to the point where it stops you, like, uh, 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 like the plank does, but it does come up noticeably high, um, which leads me to believe that people who are gutsy enough to push on the XR might be able to still go faster than the GT, but that's just a theory. But off the line, that GT is going to smoke, yes. How does the tire feel? This is question four. How does the tire feel? Well, me personally, I like to ride with the tire super inflated. I got to the point now where when I'm on the streets, I ride around 32 PSI. And I'm not a small dude. I weigh about 190 pounds. So I'm in between. Um, the tire still feel really nice, actually. It was really cushiony, but that could be probably a byproduct of the front sensor pad and the rear sensor pad. We'll get into that later. Question five. How do I feel about the front foot concave sensor pad with the... Ah, think of it like a Tostitos chip and how it just perfectly scoops like the salsa. <laughs> Dude, yo. The front foot sensor pad with the concave is the truth. I give it my stamp of approval. I was very, very, very comfortable riding on that GT with that foot. I felt locked in. And usually I do that. I get that sense of comfort from the rear tail. Um, the GT also has a different tail too. We get to that. That's one of the questions. But uh, that front foot sensor pad is, is dope. It's good. It's, it keeps you locked in. You're like, imagine having like a, if your foot is inside of a, a angle, you can push up against it. You can lock it. Next question. Do I really think that you'll be able to squeeze the range that they're talking about out of the board, out of the battery? Let's just say you're definitely not flying alone. 
um, we rode in intervals, different boards throughout the day, all day long. And the board that I was riding on, the GCD that I was riding on with a few other people, we were taking turns. We rode that thing for hours in the dirt, and it was at maybe 50%. I mean, I mean, that says a lot. An XR, you ride an XR in the grass for an hour, you might get, I don't know, six-ish plus miles out of it if you're like messing around. And we're not going in distance, but we're just messing around. And dude, yo, yes, the battery is the truth. And imagine this. Imagine if you weigh less than me. So if you weigh as much as like Tyler or Gabby Soto, like dude, they're much smaller. You could probably even squeeze out probably go faster and squeeze out more range per charge. Non-GT question. The question was, what is my top speed on the XR? Whew. My top speed on the XR with a crash or without a crash? Without a crash, 25.5. Like I said, I'm 190 pounds. I'm not 150 makes a difference. I think Gabby posted top speed. I think she hit like 30 or something like that. That's crazy. Um, feasible, but not feasible for me weighing what I weigh. And then with the crash, my top speed, 27.2. That was gnarly. I smacked my head so hard, my visor had broken off and was flapping around. Um, but uh, yeah, thank God for helping. What is the safest one wheel, in my opinion? That was the question. What is the safest one wheel that exists? Hands down, the pint. The pint is the, is the, I mean, it's not the best because it's less stable than the XR. But when it comes to, if I had to give you something and let you run wild on it without my supervision and you don't really know what you're doing, I give you the pint. Because that pushback is a lifesaver. Um, how many people do you know have said, yeah, man, I was riding my XR, I was going too fast, and then the pushback saved me. So, yeah, but people have said that about the pint. So the safest one wheel out there, hands down, the regular pint, not the pint X. Pine X is dope. Everything in stages, but the pint is the safest one wheel on the market by far. said what will be meaningfully different with my upcoming 30,000 miles on my GT in comparison to the XR so of course Don with the complex questions what will be the meaningful difference um feel free yeah um no problem I'll just start over. What will be the... No, I'm not going to start over, man. The difference between... <laughs> I don't feel like doing all the editing. The difference between my next journey on the GT, when I get a GT, will be I'll charge less. I mean, charging what was was what was taking up a bulk of my time. The most miles I ever done in a day was 134 miles. I was riding an XR that had over 6,000, 7,000 miles on the stock battery that I've ridden all up into the winter. So I was averaging, I mean, on a full charge, like eight to 10 miles. So I'm doing 10 mile loops and I still did 134 miles. I started like 5 a.m. Imagine if you could just knock out, I mean, I was doing like, on my longest run, I've done 50 miles in about three and a, three and a half hours. So, I mean, you do the match. I can squeeze in more miles because I have more time to ride. So I think that those 30K on a GT will come faster than they did on the XR because less charging, more riding. Next question, and I've thrown the numbers out because there's so many questions. The next question is, how do you feel about the charge time with the newer boards? Whew, that's tough, man. I think word is that the charge time on a Pi X with the hypercharger is like three hours, something like that. That's a long time. 
let's hope that they have a hypercharger specifically for the GT that compensates for the larger battery. Because if you could ride, let's say, 40 miles a pop on your GT without stopping, but then it takes you three and a half hours to charge. On my XR, I get about 20, 20 ish miles every charge for my extended range CPXR battery. And it only takes me 50 minutes to charge. So, like, I could be riding two to three times in that time where you're still charging. But obviously, the beauty is not having to stop, having to need to stop worrying or like. Most of my long trips that are just local, like to the MGM, I misquoted. It's about 30 miles round trip. It's about 15 miles out, 15 miles back. I can do that in a single charge from the GT, and that's invaluable. That's invaluable. I never get that kind of range on any other battery. Not the way that I ride. The next question is, do I think the GT will make the One Bull XR obsolete? Now, it's all based on preference. I don't. I personally don't think that the One Bull XR will be obsolete. One, because like I said in the previous question, that charge time, there's some people who are not going to want to wait two and a half hours to ride. Um, but also, beyond just the charge time, there are also some people who prefer the feel of an XR over a GT. Now, let me preface that, because I know most of you have not ridden a GT. There are going to be some people who will prefer the XR over the GT because of the way that the way, ah, because of the way that the board rides. So the GT has far more torque. I mean, anything feels like a lot when it comes to a one wheel. So the GT has more torque than the XR does. So it's far more stable. It doesn't give as much, which is a beautiful thing. But consider it akin to having your mission feel more, your mission profile setting, styling, feel more like delirium, if that makes sense. I'm not a huge fan of Deliri. I like my board to flow a little bit uh, when it moves. Obviously, it's something we'll get used to and it'll become the new norm as riding the one wheel became normal to us before that. We didn't have anything to compare it to. So, um, but I think that the XR will still have its place. Aftermarket accessories, customization, you got options. Uh, I would not like to, I don't want to rule that out in the future because I think that FM is an open-minded company and they consider what we have to say. They make their own decisions based on, you know, liability and all kinds of stuff. They got nothing to do with that. But they're thinkers and they're dreamers. So I hope and I doubt that, um, I hope that they will not and I doubt that they would let controlling every aspect of the board limit how much the community can do with it in terms of like accessories. But we but we will see. We will see. We will see. I'm I'm just speaking early. I don't know. I don't know. What do tricks feel like on a one wheel GT? Buttery, bro. Buttery. Like buttery. Like so many times when um, I've been riding my board, because I don't normally go out and do trick sessions, I learned most of my tricks pretty quickly. In an hour or so, maybe an hour or two of, of solid attempts, and I'll learn a new trick. Um, but the idea is that when you ride your board and then do tricks later, the battery is worn down. So some of the tricks don't perform the, the way that they, they don't come out the way that they're supposed to. They don't, like when you do a, 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 a dragon whip and the board is spinning around, it'll spin slower when you ride in the XR with a low battery. But because the GT has so much battery, like, dude, those tricks feel crisp for, like, I was riding that board for so long and, like, at no point in time did it feel like weak at all. Like, the tricks feel good. 
Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Right. I don't own this space. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> Have a good one. You too. Thank you. Um, so, the next question is, do I think the larger tire is going to affect the ride? So, I've ridden the XR that had uh, uh, a raised uh, lift kit on it. I don't know if it was the night lift kit or if it was the float life joint. I don't know which one it was, but they had a larger tire on it. Um, I liked it. It was cool. So when I rode the GT, which was different, much different than the lift kit, I'll show you in the review. I got I got side by side reviews coming up. I got a really extensive view review coming up, but um, it should make the ride smoother. Um, when you have a smaller tire, you feel more of the bumps, uh, kind of akin to like the, the, the unicyclists would say, like they can just plow through like potholes and stuff just because they have a larger tire. It's not the whole thing is not sinking in. So I think that the larger tire is going to attribute to a smoother ride overall. That's just my thoughts though. Yeah. Was I able to test out a foot pad that had the love hump? Yes, I did. I liked it. Um, think of it as like you got two little pockets in between the, the love hump. And like I said, you are in the front concave, concavity of the front foot pad. And the rear is the same. But the way that I think of that love hump and using uh, the ergonomical shape of it, I would use it to give my foot rest in different angles, like the way that your foot is positioned. So think of it like as like kind of like, like a massage while I'm riding, the way you angle your foot, and it just gives you more options in terms of like stretching and placement. Um, it's just a thought, but it's, it's cool. I like that. I had no complaints at all. No. How does the one wheel GT feel with land? When it comes to, like that one, I don't know if y'all saw the clip, I'll throw it in there. Where you see Tyler hit this jump. That's why was my idea. I was like, y'all want to smack this truck. And uh, so I was jumping off of it with the GT. And y'all, like... I think it does come from that larger tire, but also just the way that it feels with the torque, like um, the GT doesn't, it holds, it holds, and and uh, so instead of you landing and you like thinking you're gonna like slip or let it let you go, it's like boom, solid. Braking on the one wheel GT, this is something fresh, yo. The, Braking on the GT is stronger, obviously, because the motor is stronger. But you know how on the XR, if you're going at a certain speed and you brake too hard, it kind of just gives way because it just can't stop you anymore? No more of that. At least not with my riding skills. I think that that will be a thing of the past with most riders now. You'll be able to break in situations when you couldn't break before. And that is a huge improvement over what we have with XR. That's one of the outright pros. Comfortable riding speed before the board starts to give you a leg workout for pushback. Oof. Well, like I said, the board is more stable overall. So it doesn't give it all. So you're pushing more than you were before, which is why I was not so much a fan of Valerium and the legs stuck in one position, like, was not a fan of it, but I was able to connect to the app, um, I did not look at the app while riding, which I normally would do, I was so focused on filming and just enjoying it, but if I had to I had to guess at which speed. I'd say still around the same same space as the XR. Like what was advertised for the XR top speed and what is advertised nice for the GT top speed are very far off. Hi there! Hey! <laughs> and they aren't very far off from each other. So like 
I don't know why people are thinking that the boys are going to behave so very differently in terms of like hitting top speed and that pushback coming in. They already advertised it for 21. So 20, was it 20, 21? I don't read those things. But if the advertised speed is 21, there's no way pushbacks are going to come in at 20. It comes in around the same area. Like I said, not as aggressive as Mike. It definitely looks. How does the juice feel in terms of responsiveness compared to XR? It's more responsive. Um, it's hard to express just how much that torque makes a difference. Like, um, did y'all see the clip where in the video I was riding up this, the hill, the bank in California? I'll put it in the video. But um, that bank is steep and maybe if I had pumped the tire up a little bit more so it was a little more round, I think I could have just, and if I was maybe a little more skilled, maybe I could have perpetually just rode up on an angle up that hill as far as I wanted. But I could, that's not possible with the XR. Like, not in my way, maybe a lighter person can, but what the GT does and what the XR do, it's, it's almost worlds apart. It's not that much of a difference, but it's a noticeable difference. So out the box is going to be more responsive and more responsive for a longer time. Oh, by the way, like I said, the official review is coming. Be ready for that. Um, check out my Patreon. Sign up for that. Get involved. I got some giveaways, contests, group rides, more events, race, races, all types of different things we got we're working on coming. Weekly rides on the weekends. A lot of good stuff is coming. So thank you all for tuning in. Once again, it's your boy Jay Stark. Still one wheel wing, baby. Your friendly neighborhood one wheeler. About to go enjoy the rest of this day. Go ride a little bit. Peace. Last question. Do I think the GT lives up to the hype? Yeah, it did. It did.